Okay, thank you. Um, hi folks, my name is Chris McNamara. Uh, I work with Intel. Um, uh, I also prepared this presentation with Srinivas who is in the room there. So can ask him all the hard questions after this is over. Uh, I'm based in Ireland here, so um, uh, I'm joining remotely as you can see. Okay, so what I just wanted to talk about quickly, I have about three slides, is the opportunity that's there from a telco point of view. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the characteristics of the telco workloads, some of the challenges that we have, and some of the opportunities that we have to hopefully solve some of the problems we see. But just to introduce this, um, ultimately, um, you're looking at a 24-hour period. If you think of a server that's processing traffic from a phone, a cellular phone, it's running over a series of servers that uh, you can see over a 24-hour period. The load will vary based on what's happening off peak at night time and during the day. But ultimately we see a mix of adoption of power management technology. So for example, during times of peak, we can use technologies like Turbo Boost and during times of off peak, we have opportunities to use C states, P states, etc. And I think the, the most important point here is that from a, a telco space is that it's a fixed dimensioning. So what you get is you get a set of servers locked in and they're always on. They don't tend to scale in and scale out um, compute resources. So that brings opportunities for power management. So what I'm showing here is just a graphic uh, that shows the host and the guest on the right hand side. Um, what you can see here on the right, if you can see my mouse, um, is a user space application. Some of these telco applications tend to be polling um, they tend to sit there polling, they tend to be pinned, isolated, and they tend to live for very long periods of time. So the nature of those applications prevents and negates the impact of the power governors that are in the US. So what you're seeing down here on the right hand side is user space application. It's outputting some performance indicators and some utilization to a user space power governor. So one of the solutions that has been employed in this piece here I'm going to talk about, but you can see an opportunity where the user space power governor is interfacing to the SysFS for scaling min, scaling max. It's taking utilization outputs from the user space application because the OS sees this as 100% busy. Okay, so power governors are pretty much negated. Um, we also have challenges around root access. Um, applications in many of these environments don't have privileged access. So having user space power governor that's a separate entity allows us to um, build that out. Um, some of the challenges have been implementing a power management scheme within an application is, you know, not palatable for many customers that are adopting this. So having a user space governor um, works quite well from, uh, you know, monitoring resource measuring and taking that power management action, be it, uh, you know, maybe a P state scaling uh, action. Um, from a metrics point of view, like I mentioned, um, the OS doesn't have a way to suck in user space utilization in a custom way. Well, maybe until I saw the previous uh, uh, presentation by Savannah and David. Um, but one of the key challenges is the diversity between somebody who writes a scheme that works on the host that's not available in the VM, okay? So availability of power controls in the guest for these environments is a, a blocker for adoption, okay? Um, so um, I hope that's clear. And I just put a graphic up here that showed some simplistic view that uh, you don't have control from a user space power governor that you implemented on a host isn't available to you in the uh, guest environment, okay? Let me click on. Yeah, so so if you were to solve this or the components that are in a solution today, um, what I'm going to focus on the virtual machine in this case is that um, as you were to, as you were to, if you were to build this out, we would need a, as we launch the VM, we would need to attach a transport to the VM. So we would have a custom API here that allows for the user space governor to proxy uh, P state requests um, from the guest to a host. Okay, so that would involve implementation of a custom API um, 
Vertigo serial, I would argue, wasn't really intended to be used as a transport for P state requests, um, but it is a pretty low latency interface in terms of, you know, you're talking milliseconds here. Um, so you're essentially building plumbing um, for the guests of the host to proxy P state requests, right? Um, you would also need a user space governor backend that would listen at the other end of that Vertigo serial. Uh, transport and suck in the P state requests so that they could be applied through CPU frequency or Intel P state. Okay, so where we you know can see in this graphic is that we end up in a situation where we have an application that can benefit from power saving. Its utilization is preventing some of the traditional or typical techniques that we have from being able to make any power saving decisions. Um, we have customer base that isn't necessarily looking to implement or change their applications. So introducing this user space power governor is pretty received pretty well. Um, but it's I would uh, you know argue that this is a non-standard way of bringing P state requests from you know a, a guest OS down through um, uh, to the host OS. Okay, so. What, what uh, I would say for this is that you, we end up building a large number of uh, interfaces and transports and software to be able to support this type of architecture. And as you look at this, you would see that. You know, I have a question. Oh, please, yeah. Please. Yeah. So you're saying that you're using the Virteo serial interface as a way to communicate. Have you mm -hmm. looked at the Virtio SCMI interface, which the SCMI is system control management interface. That's a Virtio device, which provides you access to some frequency scaling, performance domain, and power domain and power state. Maybe that would be a better way for you, for the guest, to provide some uh, performance int to your backend. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. What I did look at was Virtio serial, um, Virtio user and Virtio VSOC. And yeah. the latency, yeah, the, they were the obvious ones. And even IVSH mem, um, for, as from a shared memory segment, uh, but there were different challenges at many of those, primarily around the latency. Um, Virtio Serial yeah. did give us the most consistent latency, sub three milliseconds. Um, there were some outliers. I think I have them written here. What did I put? Yeah, so we had some outliers, but uh, I think you mentioned SCMI. Uh, so yes. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, SCMI is nice often way. implemented on top of what I are, right? Yes. So I think well, you're going to have a similar... <laughs> my point is mainly because instead of using Virta, you serial and put your own uh, string to, to set, to set mm -hmm. some uh, performance, just use Virta, your SCMI. Everything is already defined. So you can, the guest can say, I want this kind of performance. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Saying if, I, I mean, the point of is Virta, you the best way, that's another... Another discussion. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's a good suggestion. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. Another observation. So uh, you, you mentioned the latency for setting your communications on the order of milliseconds. So when I was doing testing, I think with hypercalls and BPF solutions, we're getting in the orders of tens of microseconds, and it had a pretty significant uh, impact on performance for us. So it's something that we uh, we observed. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, that was one of the things I wasn't sure that, uh, but I think um, that's a good suggestion if we can get to microseconds, that's even better uh, again. Yeah. One other usual question, because it's always confusing to me. Are you using Schedutal? I don't know how Schedutal and x86 work, because you use EPP. Yeah. So there's not no Schedutal. Okay. No, the, the decision. No, on the host side. User space there too. Okay. Quantities done. Run. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's here. It's not like you clamping or other thing because here the application itself is smart enough to tell utilization because it's all constantly polling. It's a telco workflow. It's very so you're just trying to get the pipe to the value. Yeah, it's like the every two hundred two hundred per second. Can you set it on the host side and call it a day if you're not really trying to pipe anything through? Uh, so if my understanding of this is correct, it is about the application anticipating its needs, right? So it, it will say, I, 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 will, I will now need this much of 
performance going forward sure. and and like pass it to a host through the through all of the okay through all of the <laughs> Yeah, so it does yeah. not expect it to change very often, then yeah. Yeah, so I guess whatever products. So there there is just the application is the is the you know is the driver here. It's like, okay. yeah. All right, so one minute left. Any any more comments? Oh. Yeah, uh, ju just fi finally um th thanks for your time and by th thanks for the feedback. Okay. Um uh appreciate it. So thank you. And uh, you can ask Rina Vastor if you want to contact me afterwards. If any other suggestions, I'd love to hear them. So thanks again. Right. Great. Thank you.